Good day, two-wheel friends. Zach here with RevZilla, and welcome to another episode of Daily Rider, where we learn about motorcycles as we ride. Our guest today is the 2024 Kawasaki Eliminator. That is a $7,000 motorcycle with a 450cc parallel twin wrapped up in a chassis that is a little bit harder to define, actually. It's not a full-on cruiser, not really a standard bike either, and uh, that's sort of the way the model line's always been, come to think of it, for you old fogies that remember the original Eliminator from back in the 80s and 90s. I think to really understand the Eliminator, where it sits in motorcycling and how it works on a day-to-day -day basis, you'd need at least a half hour ride or so to the office to talk it through. And that being the case, I've got great news for you. Buckle up, everybody. Here we go. Okay, okay, almost ready to go here with the Kawasaki Eliminator. As usual, a friendly reminder of the main sponsor of this show, which is Revzilla, the YouTube channel that you're watching. The way that we make money here at Revzilla is we sell parts and accessories to you, the motorcycle enthusiast. Then we take some of that money that we make doing that and we put it into productions like this, Daily Rider or other original content productions on the YouTube channel. And the reason we do it is to make the motorcycling world a more entertaining and educated and hopefully a better place um, in the hopes that the next time you need something for you or your bike, you'll think of Revzilla first and know that when you spend money at Revzilla, some of that money goes to supporting this show. So thank you. Alrighty, 2024 Kawasaki Eliminator. We can start with the old engine there. I mentioned it's a 450cc parallel twin. It's actually 451cc parallel twin, 180 crank, derived from the engine used in the Ninja 400, though it has a little bit more displacement. The engine got larger, not from bore or the size of the piston, which is the same, but the stroke, the distance that the piston travels inside the engine has been lengthened, which makes the displacement larger. Historically, what that does to an engine is offer some more torque-rich character, which would be good for a cruiser, theoretically. We'll talk more about the engine as we ride, of course, but that is the basic structure. You can see pretty simple steel tube frame, right set up fork, twin shock set up in the back. It is a pretty basic motorcycling chassis, really. Same goes for the accessory hardware, the brakes. You got sort of run-of-the-mill Nissan calipers, rubber lines, and I'm trying to think what else. You got this sort of cruiser cafe styling, round headlight, round mirrors. Then again, there's a little bit of 80s flair, especially to the back, I think, with the little upswoop and the bobbed fender. It's kind of a cool, tough-looking bike. The one place where the, the Eliminator loses it a little bit with the cruiser aesthetic, I think, is having a real centerpiece engine from an aesthetic standpoint, right? Like a, a liquid-cooled parallel twin doesn't have the kind of presence that an American V-Twin would have or any any really sort of like air-cooled V-Twin or, or even like a, you know, Indian Scout engine or something like that that's liquid-cooled but it has a bunch of contrast cut stuff on the engine. They sort of try to make that V-Twin look a little bit more like the centerpiece of the bike. But anyway, there's your basics for the bike. No real stuff to keep in mind as we keep going. I guess, the, as usual, the passenger accommodations, which if you look at them from above, are smaller, <laughs> which is pretty typical, I guess. But that's something to keep in mind. Other than that, let's fire it up and see if it sounds like a Ninja 400. Spoiler alert, yes it does. <laughs> Alright. Coolio! Kawasaki Eliminator. I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, it's a pretty, uh, it's, an, it's an interesting bike. I've got some thoughts. Let's get right into it, shall we? <laughs> Off we go. Time for specs, I would say. Oh, just in time for the train to come across the road here. But that's okay, because I like to talk about seat height while we are stopped. And this will give us an opportunity to do so. Um, so the 451cc Kawasaki Eliminator um, has a 3.4 gallon gas tank. And when that gas tank was full, it tipped the scales at Revzilla West at 390 pounds. Uh, which is fairly small. It also has a 28.9 inch seat height, which uh, as you can see, getting a lot of bend from my leg here. It is quite low and quite approachable and uh, fairly light under 400 pounds, which is significant, I think. Yeah, definitely of note. And the price I mentioned at 
seven thousand dollars. I believe it's sixty nine fifty for this ABS model. It's a little bit less for the non ABS model, and it's a little bit more if you get the SE version, which has a little bikini fairing on there. But around seven grand is the uh, price that really matters. I would say. Stop looking at your phones and go. I believe the numbers going around the internet are 54 horsepower, I think. Is that 52 or 54? I'll put it on screen to confirm, which is six or eight more than the Ninja 400 has. So that's what you get with that larger displacement. It's a sort of a significant bump from 399 cc's to 451 from Ninja to Eliminator. And the power bump is, um, is significant as well. And um, it's arguably, more noticeable because the Eliminator is not a particularly heavy bike despite being cruiser-ish. It only weighs about 15 or 20 pounds more than a Ninja 400. So the power pays off, you might say. Anyway, back to the task at hand, which is ergonomics. Um, the main reason that the uh, Eliminator is not a full-on cruiser, as I as I stated earlier, is that um, it, it doesn't feel it, it, you know, you have sort of a, a cruiser stance here where you, you sit back a little bit, but uh, but the foot pegs are kind of underneath your upper leg, very mid control. The foot pegs are fairly far back, and of course the the seat height is low, uh, lower than uh, even than a Honda Grom or a Kawasaki Z125 or one of those sort of like mini bikes. You know, that have sort of 30 inch seat heights, so it is a sort of cruiser level seat height. But uh, the riding position is is fairly compact, and the foot pegs are moved back. And, um, and the seat is just high enough that you don't have to have your feet out in front of you, which makes for not quite a standard riding position, but almost. Well, this is a proper little hornet's nest of traffic, I gotta say. Um, for those of you who live in areas where splitting lanes is legal, um, then you will find the Eliminator quite a nice bike for that. It's, uh, like I said, low, which is nice because it's unintimidating. It's also fairly narrow, especially the mirrors. We'll talk more about that later. And it's pretty light on its feet, you know? It's kind of agile. Makes for quick work when you're splitting lanes. But luckily, the freeway has freed up. And here we are going just about highway speeds. And when you do find yourself at these speeds, what you'll find is a pretty comfortable place to sit, actually. The riding position is very upright and there is very much no wind protection, obviously. So if you're a taller rider such as myself at six foot two, you'll find your torso takes on a lot of wind blast, but the seat is just flat enough where you can scoot back a little bit and kind of use the front of the passenger seat as a little bit of a butt stop. And because the foot pegs aren't way out in front of you, you can put a little bit of pressure on the balls of your feet if you go over bumps, stuff like that. And despite the limited leg room and the fairly sharp bend in your knee, it feels relaxed and no reason you couldn't take this sucker on a long day ride or even a road trip. I'd also like to say I think Kawasaki did a pretty good job of isolating the vibrations of the engine at this speed because the vibrations that you do get from 180 degree crank parallel twin like this one are kind of high frequency. They can be obnoxious if they're not tamed properly, but it's a cushy enough seat and whatever tuning's been done in the handlebars and foot pegs makes for a pretty comfy place to sit. I can tell that there are vibrations from the engine because where my legs sit against this little frame rail, I can feel pretty significant vibes, but they don't make it to your hands and feet, which is important. Talking of road trips and whatnot, fuel mileage and range figures are pretty good. I got mid 50s. I think the highest number I saw was 57. And the lowest number I saw was in the low 50s somewhere. So the 3.4 gallon tank, you're gonna go theoretically 100 and, what is that? 180, 190 miles. But I think realistically, you're gonna get gas at 150 miles-ish. That's actually fine because my butt got kind of tired of this seat after about <laughs> I don't know, maybe an hour and a half or something like that. And it's weird because the seat feels like when you push your thumb into it, it feels thick enough, I think, and wide enough. I like the shape of it. I like it. I thought I liked it. And then I rode for a little while and I don't know if I'm like blowing through it or if it's just the density, maybe it's a little too soft. I'm not sure. Anyway, hopefully you'll have better luck with the saddle than I did because I think in general, it's pretty good. 
point being you're going to take a break after probably about 150 miles anyway just based on fuel capacity and range got a little bit of mist in the air here on this autumnal commute across the port of los angeles but i'm not the weatherman i'm the mirror man and i wanted to mention the mirrors one more time as i said before it's nice that they're narrow because that works well for lane sharing provided that's an acceptable practice where you live unfortunately the mirror is not very good at seeing what's behind you and of course that is really job number one for mirrors <laughs> aside from being out of the way of lane splitting or looking cool or any other little things that mirrors might do yeah i don't know why the, the stalks need to be this much longer and they'd be out here and then maybe the bike wouldn't look as tough and maybe it wouldn't be as good for squeezing through narrow passages of traffic but i wouldn't see mostly my bicep in the mirror when i tried to see behind me which i would appreciate down off the freeway and into the neighborhood here where the revs will drop down and of course this is where we do the, the old stop sign challenge we try to come to a complete stop with our feet on the pegs zero miles an hour on the speedo and then continue on and i think it's often a good barometer of a bike's balance uh, okay almost tipped over but hey that was a pretty good one i find the kawasaki eliminator extremely good in these situations i just think it is low and it is light and it's just just like a fairly balanced little machine in general there are no kind of oddities with the ergonomics or the weight or the chassis design it's all very kind of like reasonable and basic which means there's not a lot to talk about but it also means that when you come to a stop at zero miles an hour it's pretty easy to just stay upright uh and i find this bike really excellent for uh, urban and suburban riding in typical kawasaki fashion all the usual stuff is pretty good too fueling is not bad it's a little herky-jerky down at the sort of on off point which is really typical for bikes but the clutch feels pretty good um and i think the it's the, all the ways the ways that you interact with the bike are very predictable um, the clutch feel is really light uh it's just a it's awfully easy to use my my one complaint which is unfortunately also a little bit typical of kawasaki is that the transmission's not great especially when it's cold i find neutral kind of hard to find and yes those of you who are cracking your fingers to point out in youtube comments that it has the positive neutral finder it does have that but i don't think that ah son of a gun screwed that one up i don't think that the positive neutral finder feature on kawasaki's uh small displacement kawasaki's anyway is any excuse to not have a transmission that works properly <laughs> uh, and it's fine it's like a, it's a it's a b minus transmission it's there's nothing wrong with it outright it's just it's not super intuitive and the and it's a little bit difficult to interpret sometimes um, and since we're stuck at this red light here we can talk about the positive neutral finder just briefly since i brought it up uh, if you go to well if you're in neutral first of all uh, as stoplight you are not able to go to second gear if I lift up on the shift lever here, you can't go to second, which is one of the reasons I don't like the positive neutral finder because sometimes I want to start in second gear. And I think that's my freedom as a motorcyclist, darn it. But for those riders who are new to motorcycling or for some reason have trouble finding neutral because of the gearbox, <laughs> for example, uh, if you're in first gear at a stoplight like this and you want to find neutral because you cannot go to second gear, you can just sort of lift up on the shift lever willy-nilly and you will go into neutral and you will not go into second gear which is a feature undoubtedly but all the stuff i just said about transmission still stands i think all right first gear engaged eliminator engaged <laughs> last thing i'll say about the kawasaki eliminator as we approach the final stop sign in the neighborhoods here is um that i'm not you know historically a uh, a, a cruiser guy uh so to speak i would almost certainly just buy a kawasaki z400 naked bike instead of this eliminator uh 450 because you'd get the same basic engine and i prefer the sort of naked sport bike look and feel but 
I don't think there's enough good things I can say about this bike in these environments. I just, it's, it's almost like it's designed to do stuff like this and it's fine on the highway. Uh, and it's, we'll talk about its performance on twisty roads later on, but it's just, it's so low. It's so approachable. It's so easy. It's so good at this kind of thing. Uh, that I, I have to, I got to tip my cap to it. Like I said, I'm not, um, I'm not, I'm not the target market, but I have to admit that it's, it's terrific in this environment. All right, Lover's Lane. As for passenger accommodations on the Kawasaki Limited, I did show you the seat earlier that it was quite a bit smaller than the rider seat, which is typical for a motorcycle. The thing that really gets me about it is that it's also just a very different material. I mean, if I slide back onto the seat right now, onto the passenger seat, and it's like acceptable, but it's a perch, man. It is five times as stiff as the rider seat and half the width. I mean, it's surprisingly unaccommodating, I think, but clearly a decision that was made and clearly one that I didn't ask Kawasaki about, but I'm pretty sure they'd, uh, Kawasaki would stand behind it and say that the, the Eliminator is meant to ride alone. But if you want to take someone across town or something like that, you'll be just fine. There is technically a seat and foot pegs back there. Okie dokie, into the twisty road section we go. And as I alluded to earlier on that freeway on-ramp situation, the Eliminator is pretty good at this. On the spectrum of cruisers, it is pretty sporty. It's fun. It's light, like I've said a bunch of times. It's agile, like I've said a couple times. It feels good on the side of the tire. It doesn't feel out of sorts or out of its element, you know? The suspension travel is short which is one of the reasons that the seat height is short and for that reason it doesn't have all the same kind of weight distribution and compliance that a naked sport bike or a sport bike would have but it's great i think especially since it reaches into a dimension of approachability that is pretty atypical for a bike that has this much sporting capability to have it's great i like it down out of the twisty road section and back towards surface streets and uh, ultimately I was sad to be stuck behind a pickup truck which in some ways is a barometer for how enjoyable a bike is on roads like that and you know <laughs> the eliminator passed the test hey yo I forgot about that little guy <laughs> uh, which actually reminds me that I should talk about the suspension a little bit more. I mentioned that it's short. I don't remember the exact number. I think it's 3.1 inches, uh, maybe. Three inches of rear suspension travel is, I'm trying to remember the phrase we use on here on Daily Rider. Not enough, I think is what I would say. But I'm less mad at it on the Eliminator because of the foot peg position, because the foot pegs are kind of underneath my, my upper leg and I can put pressure on my feet as I just did. I saw that bump coming, I like stood, so I like posted on the peg just a little bit and um, and soaked it up and I didn't just take it all through my spine like it would have on a bike with a more traditional foot forward cruiser riding position. So maybe that's some of my biases showing through or maybe it's uh, practical and correct. I'll let you decide. All right, let's talk about the dash on this Mamma Jamma. Oh, let's not actually. Green light. Time to go. <laughs> Back to the engine, I do have an inherent dislike for the sound and the feel, the vibrations and that kind of thing of this 180 crank Kawasaki Parallel Twin in kind of whatever variety, 399 cc's, 451 cc's, 650 cc's, but it is undeniably energetic and peppy and I do like that. I do like it. I say that I don't like the feel, I don't like the high frequency vibrations that you get through the bike while you're riding it. But the energy that it gives off and it delivers is really fun. It's really fun. And I find that on, on just about every Kawasaki Parallel Twin, whether it's a Ninja 400 or versus 650, whatever. I, I keep wanting to say I don't like the engine, but in the end, I kind of do. All right, maybe we got time to talk about the dash now. Let's give it a go, shall we? Scratch my nose here. Um, it's going to be a short discussion. You got a analog or sorry a uh, digital sort of faux analog tachometer that goes up around the top there you got a clock in the middle big speed display in the middle and off to the right here gear position indicator and then here you got some trip meters and average fuel range which is actually a really nice feature for a bike with this sized fuel tank um, and then a 
fuel gauge at the bottom. Uh, Ari, my friend Ari, who did the first ride review article on this bike on Common Tread, which you may read at any time at your leisure, said that he found the range figures to be way off. <laughs> Uh, not very accurate for this bike, but it's nice that you can, you know, learn what the bike's capable of and, um, and have some data to base it off of anyway. Last thing I should mention about the dash, despite its simple look, it does have Bluetooth connectivity and uh, you can use the Kawasaki Rideology app, I believe it's called, and you can track ride data and see a ride on a map, on your phone, stuff like that. It does have one or two high-tech features despite it being very small and simple, which I guess is good if you're into that kind of thing. Coming to the end of the ride here, and I suppose we could talk about um, the Eliminator and where it sits in the world of motorcycling. I didn't even really talk about the evolution of the bike very much or that the, the Eliminator from the 80s, which um, used an inline four cylinder engine from the KZ9 or which was GPZ 900 maybe, the 900 Ninja uh, inline four. And it was, uh, you know, it was a power cruiser in a sort of a classic sense. And I think that the new Eliminator here does have some of that same vibe to it. You could say that it's a sport bike engine that has been put in a cruiser <laughs> and what you get is a mashup of the two. Quick red light uh, brake test here, shall we? Brakes are good. I mean, it's, it's a light bike. It benefits a lot from that. The braking hardware is really nothing special and it's just a single disc, but it stops well. I think because it's low and it's a decent size disc on the back too. Anyway. The point is, the Eliminator does in some ways, like I said, take a sport bike engine, put it in a sort of quasi-cruiser chassis, and I think what it does most of all that interests me is something that not a lot of other bikes do. I think of the Ducati Diavel, which is of course a big flagship cruiser, but it is a power cruiser, and I think that it makes for a really unique experience in motorcycling, and I don't think there are a lot of bikes that are doing what the Eliminator does in this category as I said on the on the twisty road you know to sort of combine all those capabilities one other thought I'll leave you with is the Honda Shadow Phantom which we tested recently here on Daily Rider it's sort of a Honda V-twin it's a very um, Harley Davidson focused you might say and it's a it's a calm experience and it has a, a fairly lopy engine and um, and this um, this bike is not that this bike is like you know whereas the shadow is saying oh i don't know everybody, just take it easy everybody the the eliminator is kind of like let's find some trouble man which i like it's good attitude and speaking of trouble let's take a dirt road shortcut shall we on the tiny little power cruiser <laughs> uh i don't think there is trash control yeah nope there's not this is a good example of a place where you could get yourself in trouble on a bike like this because you think, oh, it's so light and small and fun and we'll just blast around and we'll have fun. <laughs> Look at it go, Eliminator, whoa! You know, the ABS isn't even that bad for uh, <clears throat> riding in the dirt. <laughs> but I just think it's a confidence-inspiring package just because it's so compact and, and light and, and direct. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff is this my favorite small cruiser it might be it might be I guess we'll find out when we try to wheelie it right that's always the test okie dokie we'll try first gear first whoa yeah Look out! <laughs> I got second gear, but we didn't really get anywhere. Can we do, what about second gear passenger pegs? <laughs> yeah! Eliminator! It just eliminated any doubt that it can do wheelies. I hope. <laughs> That's a raucous little machine. That's fun. Good stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Might be my favorite small cruiser. Might be. Royal Enfield Meteor 350. Handsome, fun, but not as good at wheelies. <laughs> Look at it go. And can we back it in here? I think 
<laughs> you kind of can. <laughs> uh, it doesn't um, doesn't do the back ends particularly well. Um, it has ABS. I believe it has a slipper clutch, but it also has a lot of rear weight bias. And of course, to back it in, it's good to get that weight transferred to the front tire so that the back end can be nice and light. And uh, that's a tricky thing with the Eliminator. So, you know, does it do surprisingly good wheelies? Yes, but is there a limit to its hooliganism? Also, yes. All right, U-turn challenge. Uh, we'll line up next to this transit here, and we're going to go. I don't think I'm not, I'm not going to go for the straight up two parking space. I'm just going to go full lock left. Oh, we might have had it. I think that's two parking spaces. I think we had it. That's awfully good for a for a wee little cruiser. I don't know what else to call it. Like I said, it's not a full-on cruiser, but it's not not a cruiser. I would feel comfortable cruising on it. I'd feel comfortable doing a lot of things on it, which is the thing I, I think I like most about the Eliminator is, um, it's like I said, it's attitude. It's just got a, it's got a good, it's got a good vibe. It's not really my type of bike, but, but I like the, I like the pep in its step. That does nothing for me. Leaves me totally cold. But the bike itself does, warms my heart a little bit, I gotta say. Okie dokie, Instagram questions. Uh, first question here is from Hanging Off the Handlebars, who says, why did Kawasaki choose this bike to release a, quote, new engine? Uh, I don't know, is the answer to that question. <laughs> One thing that happens with motorcycle development sometimes is engines are released as they are developed and as the motorcycle that is being developed at the same time, it gets that engine and it gets released, doesn't necessarily go with the motorcycle that would suit the engine's purpose best, which in this case I think would arguably be a Versus X400 or, or a Versus X450 maybe, uh, or a Ninja 450 or a Z450 or something like that. So that's what can happen sometimes. Uh, another thing that I heard is that this is a motorcycle that was not necessarily designed for the U.S. market and was designed with other constraints in mind and then was released in the United States because the Eliminator name has some cachet or something like that, you know. But the bottom line is I don't know the answer to your question. Perhaps someone else does. And I think it's a good question to ask for any new motorcycle. And I'll try to align it with what you want from your bike. Next question is from Nath Norris Photography, who asks, would this make a good beginner tour if you added saddles, windscreen, etc.? Yeah, saddlebags will windscreen. I don't see why not tank bag. The range isn't super long, but, uh, but whatever. I think it's totally capable of that. I think it'd be great for that. I think you should do it and take photos of it while you're at it. Next question is from Nick Manu, who asks a question that I got many times over on this motorcycle, which is totally fair, which is how does it compare to the Honda Rebel 500? And also how does it compare to the Kawasaki Vulcan S, which is a sibling to this Kawasaki Eliminator that uses a 650cc uh, parallel twin rather than this 450cc parallel twin. And is Kawasaki stepping on its own toes by doing this? So for a quick comparison, if memory serves, the Honda Rebel 500 is about $500 cheaper than the Eliminator in the same spec, in the ABS spec, I believe, about $6,500. Uh, and it does use a slightly larger engine, 471 cc's, as opposed to 451, so you get 20 extra cc's there. Uh, and it does have a slightly different look, right? It's a little bit more of a, a scooped saddle, very low seat, sort of a neoclassic cruiser. And the way that it compares really is that, like I said, the attitude of the Eliminator is sportier. I would hesitate to call it a muscle cruiser or a power cruiser, but it's got that vibe. Whereas the Rebel is a sort of modern take on a classic cruiser. Oh, by the way, the Rebel 500 is 20 something pounds heavier, I think, than the Eliminator also, which is something that the Eliminator's got as a notch in its belt. Slightly smaller engine, but at least as much power, maybe even more and less weight, which is pretty cool. The Kawasaki Vulcan S is a little bit more of a typical cruiser in that it's very low slung. It does have a larger engine and uh, therefore more power, but it weighs a hundred and something pounds more and it uh, costs an extra thousand bucks approximately, I think. Those are things to keep in mind. I do think that this accesses a slightly different price point. It definitely accesses a different weight class of bike. Right? It's just much smaller. And the Vulcan S is slightly different in so much as Kawasaki really leans into that... Um, Oh, uh, God, what does it call it? Um, er ergo, 
ergo fit or something like that where you can take you you know there's different factory settings for the handlebar for the foot peg for the seat so you can sort of adjust the riding position on the Vulcan S which is a facet of that bike that the Eliminator has not adopted. So all of that is how this bike compares sort of on paper to the Rebel and the Vulcan. As for how I think they compare, I like the Eliminator's attitude compared to the Rebel. I like that it's a little bit taller seat height, a little bit more lean angle is possible. It's sportier, but I still think it has a kind of a cruiser attitude, which I appreciate. And as for the Vulcan S, aside from that Ergo Fit stuff, I don't know how much it offers that this doesn't. Maybe Kawasaki did step on its own toes because if I was going to get a Kawasaki Cruiser last year, I would have gotten a Vulcan probably. <laughs> uh, but this year I might do something like this just because I, like I like the cut of its jib. Not Ben H asked the next question, which was, how long did it take to get used to the offset cluster? I didn't talk about that during the ride, but yeah, the, you know, the, the dash is set off to the left here. The only reason I saved this comment was to point out that lots of other bikes have offset clusters, and I don't never seem to mind. I also wanted to point out that I often have a, um, a phone mount with, um, with my cell phone, you know, mounted on the handlebar. And, uh, and if I was doing that, I think having an offset cluster might be kind of nice. You'd block the key, but like, who cares? You only need to access the key every now and then. And then, uh, and then your phone could ride here and it might kind of actually work. I don't think that's why Kawasaki did it, as far as I know, <laughs> but it's maybe a fringe benefit of the offset cluster. Just throwing it out there. All right, last question here is from SJ Kirchner, who asks, if this motorcycle were a track from ZZ Top's classic album, Eliminator, which one would it be? Well, 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 I'm not a ZZ Top historian. <laughs> I don't know much about ZZ Top, to be honest, but I did listen to the album because of SJ Kirchner's question here. <laughs> and I made a, a determination that I have no idea whether it'll resonate with you or not, but I love these kind of questions and I appreciate it. It's not like Give Me All Your Lovin' or Sharp Dressed Man. Like, it's not one of the hits, right? The Eliminator is not a, it's not a lightning rod of attention, I don't think. <laughs> so if the Eliminator were a track on ZZ Top's album Eliminator, it would be a lesser known track. What were some of the ones that, I think Legs is on that one too, but that's too mainstream. I'm going to go with a, a little tune called TV Dinners, which, uh, <laughs> which has some sort of unintentionally hilarious lyrics and doesn't really have anything to do with anything except that they're talking about how sometimes you got to do what you got to do with the TV dinner. <laughs> um, and I think it's an unflattering way to pose the Kawasaki Eliminator as a last ditch effort. But in some ways it feels like a parts bin bike. It feels like something that you do when you're sort of like, ah, we gotta, we're going to put this thing in here and we're going to do that. It doesn't have the vibe of a clean sheet design where they really thought this is a way we're going to make a splash. And I'm not saying that TV dinners is just a filler track for ZZ Top, but if you were to accuse them of that, I wouldn't argue with you. <laughs> Ultimately, I don't think that the Eliminator is unintentionally hilarious. I think that it is a cool little bike off the beaten track a little bit for the mainstream motorcycling, you know, not being an ADV, not being a full on cruiser, not being a sport bike, but ultimately has some capability and some charm that I think might fly under the radar a little bit. And I hope because of this video, maybe less so. All right, let's put the sucker on the leaderboard and we will take it from there. Hey everybody. All right, here we are inside Revzilla West. Thanks for riding along so far. One more ride to take down the uh, Daily Rider leaderboard lane, you might say. As a friendly reminder of what's at the top of the board here, we still got a Suzuki Lockout at the top, V-Strom 800 SB650 Jix 8S. This is where you might be expecting me to say something like, there's no way the Eliminator is going to knock those bikes off the top. Okay, there's probably no way, but it's a good, it's an awfully good bike. Let's start talking about where it's going to fall here, yeah? Triumph Bonneville T100. Excellent bike. Love that bike. Very good bike. I don't think... The Eliminator is going to knock the T100 down a peg, but but that's the that's where we're playing, I think. Ducati Street Fighter V2. <clears throat> I had a blast on that bike. Thought it was great. I think the Eliminator is going to finish above the Street Fighter. <sighs> Whoa, that means it's going to finish above a ZX4 RR. Yep, I'll stand by that. Above a Ninja 400, Zach. <laughs> I think so. I don't know what the Ninja 400 does that the Eliminator doesn't. You can take it to a track day, and it's a fun track bike. I'll give it that. But for the daily ride, Eliminator is pretty good. It's pretty good. It might be more comfortable than Ninja 400 too. Might be. That's that's a tough pill to swallow for me. <laughs> but but I, I think I'm I'm on board. That leaves the Kawasaki Z650 RS and the Honda CB500X. So CB500X uses the same engine as the Rebel 500, of course. Uh, but it is a, an adventure bike 
platform, so it has some wind protections, a little bit of off-road capabilities, stuff like that. Uh, and the Z650 RS is a, a sort of retro-styled naked bike using the same engine as the Vulcan S from Kawasaki, which we discussed <coughs> earlier. So, the Kawasaki Eliminator. Where does, where, where, where do we think? Where does it fall in here? Is it better than a Z650 RS? Ooh, no. I don't think so, no. Honda CB500X. Uh, no, that bike's too good. It's too good. So Street Fighter V2, if you ask me what I want in my garage, I would go with any of these four bikes here. Street Fighter, ZX4RR, Ninja 400, CF Moto 450SS. I'd probably have those above an Eliminator. But do I think that those bikes are better daily riders? Would I be sooner to recommend those bikes not knowing who you are, not knowing how much money you have, not knowing how tall you are? Stuff like that? I wouldn't. Nope. I wouldn't. I think the Kawasaki Eliminator is a terrific daily rider. Really, really good. Fun, peppy, easy, low, light. Cool. Not, it's not my cup of tea. But but it's, but it's cool and it works well. It's hard for me to put aside my, <laughs> my love for and my, and my biases toward um, these bikes here. But I think this is fair. That's a bit of a bombshell. Maybe, depending on what you were expecting. Um, uh, the Eliminator, it, it surprised me in some ways. And uh, I do think I will be reaching for that as a recommendation more often than I was expecting before I took this ride. Hope you had fun, hope you learned something as usual, and uh, do your best not to get eliminated out there. See you next time, everybody. Sweet jigster, brah. Likes it. Yeah, the eliminator gets a nod. Tough stuff, this little guy.